the News Channel 5 Network. This is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Just when you thought the 109th Tennessee General Assembly was history, they're back. Lawmakers convened in a special session this coming Monday afternoon. They returned to Nashville at the request of Governor Bill Haslam. They're being asked to fix a DUI law that has federal officials threatening to cut off $60 million in badly needed federal, month, federal transportation funds from the state. Nashville State Representative John Ray Clemens is our guest on Inside Politics this week. He's here to help us understand how all this came about and perhaps about some other things that may be going on on the Hill this week. John Ray, thanks for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me. Happy Marine Week. Yeah, so, so how did this happen? I mean, how did Tennessee, who thought we needed a new DUI law for underage drinkers? But at the same time, they changed the blood alcohol so it was even more difficult to charge them under that. Who thought that was a good idea? Well, it's the best of my understanding, speaking with the sponsor, was that it came from the sponsor himself. He thought we needed to strengthen it, our DUI laws. And quite frankly, um, almost everyone well, usually, in the House... Usually making the blood alcohol standards lower is not the way to do that. Well, that's not exactly what the law did. Under the old law, it, it was a plea. For people between the 18 to 21 range, uh, it was a plea where they basically got off of the DWI um, if they were above .02, and it was a plea down from a DUI. So so what we did, in fact, was strengthen the law for 18 to 21 year olds uh, to bring them under the real and the regular DUI law. And now only the 16 to 17 year olds had that DWI um, uh, plea, if you will. But the feds didn't see it that way and apparently didn't communicate to anybody down here in Nashville while the bill was going through the process because there was absolutely no controversy on this bill. It passed with lopsided bipartisan majorities in both houses and in all the committees. It did, and many of my colleagues, just like you said, felt like I did. We felt like we were strengthening our state's DUI laws and taking away a, le a lesser offense or a plea uh, from people who have threatened uh, people on our roadways. Now. You know, th this issue came about because fiscal review didn't do its job. The federal government doesn't have the responsibility of watching all the legislation in all 50 states. This was a state problem. This was the state's fault. Fiscal review, TDOT, the governor's budget office, no one caught this. Six fiscal notes signed by two different fiscal review directors were produced on this single bill as it went through the legislative process over an 18-month period. None of them called it, and we as legislators rely on fiscal review to do its job. Is this a big goof, a one-time situation, or is this symptomatic of a system that's broken in terms of so many bills, so little time, maybe not enough staff? Well, I think it's a, it's a little bit of everything. We move at a rapid pace up there and pass a lot of legislation. Unlike Congress... Always want to be done by mid-April. Well, you know, that I think that was Senator uh, or Speaker Ramsey's uh, agenda. I think Speaker Harwell pretty much kept up with that. Um, but moving that fast has its consequences. And so we necessarily rely, even lawyers like myself who can read these bills and understand them and do our homework, we rely on fiscal review to do its job. We rely on TDOT to use its expertise in the governor's budget office. But like it I said, seems pretty interesting. Somebody could have just picked up the phone, called the federal government somewhere. They, they have people they contact out there and say, is this bill okay? And they, they didn't have to do a lot of calculations, and I wouldn't have think it would take too long to get them to focus on it once they sent them a copy of the bill. You're absolutely right. And that's the three, those three different organizations that I just mentioned, that's their job, and they failed to do that. So what do we need to do to fix the problem long term so that you're not back up here every year having to fix bills that somehow don't aren't, aren't in line with the federal government regulation? Well, I think we can do a number of things. I, I think we can slow down the process. We can give uh, these bills and pieces of legislation that come through the legislative process more thoughtful consideration, more debate. And, of course, we, we are still going to rely on fiscal review and the executive departments to do their job. If they have inadequate staffing, then they need to be adequately staffed. Unlike Congress, us members of the legislature Legislature, we don't have staffs of 12 to 24 people to help us analyze bills. That's on our shoulders as individuals. And so we keep up as best we can while we're basically drinking water out of a fire hose while they're pushing through this ultra conservative agenda we are doing our best to keep up with it but it is symptomatic of the, of the system that, as it exists today 
A lot of people don't like it, but government continues to get more complicated on the federal level, on the state level, on the local level. Right. You do have a colleague that had a bill in the legislature last time that said, you know, maybe we ought to set up a situation where every fall we have the potential to have a special session and it's on the books unless we decide we don't need one. That didn't go anywhere at all last year in the session. People kind of laughed about it. But after this, and with all the things that continue to be controversies throughout the year in the state, even when the legislature's gone home, do we need to take a look, another look at that and see if having the idea of having a, a scheduled special session wouldn't be a bad idea? I don't think that's necessary if we simply do our job and slow down and encourage thoughtful debate. If you've ever watched the House floor, they try to move through as fast as possible. Now, this DUI bill is a perfect example. The first time I ever saw this piece of legislation was when it got to the House floor. And if you've seen the way the House floor is run, they don't like any debate on the bills when they come to the floor. They don't like any amendments added to the bill when they come to the floor. So someone like myself who wants to ask questions and have a thoughtful debate on piece of legislation legislation like this and ask those questions, we're act actually discouraged from doing so. But on the other side of that, before you were in the legislature, there were days, mm -hmm. it's maybe hard to believe now, that the Democrats <laughs> actually controlled right. the House and the Senate. In those, in those days, the legislature used to last till at least Labor Day, a Memorial Day weekend, sometimes mm -hmm. into June, and some people thought, well, they just get up there and waste time, and then suddenly in about mid-April or May, they say, well, we got to get a budget done. Right. I mean, isn't it, isn't the problem that maybe mid-April's not the date, but maybe almost the end of June isn't either to get your business done? Well, I, you know, we are restrained with legislative days. Under the law, we only have, I believe it's 90 legislative days. The legislative, legislative days. days are not like exactly. 24 hours. Exactly. So I think we, within the law, would have the right to go. I don't think a firm date is necessary or appropriate. Our chief job is to pass thoughtful, well-crafted legislation legislation that will benefit Tennesseans. If you add in speed and a deadline to that, you create variables that are unnecessary and result in real problems like the $60 million mess that we're in right now. Let's take a break. We're talking to John Ray Clemens, Nashville State Representative, about the special session of the legislature coming up on Monday. There'll be another issue coming up about in the special session as well. It's not part of the call the governor put out, but it looks like lawmakers are going to take up the Jeremy Durham affair again. I'd like to talk to this representative about that after this break.